Hey guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today I'm gonna to, gonna answer a question from a YouTuber who responded to one of my videos about how to get your models in the correct size from Blender into your Shitu box slicer. So this is something that all of us go through. And when we think in terms of the any slicer that we use for our 3D printers, we have to think in terms of millimeters. When we think, when we're modeling in Blender out of the box, one problem Blender has is it doesn't default to anything. It defaults to what used to be called Blender units. Those Blender units are arbitrary numbers. So how do we make our models size down into millimeters so that when we export them, they properly import into our slicer so that this doesn't happen and oh my god it doesn't fit well of course if i can rotate this 90 degrees maybe i can get it to fit so let's rotate this oh let's see along the z-axis and there it is but now it's huge it's not really what i wanted maybe i wanted this to be a little bit uh, smaller and when i modeled it i only modeled it to be let's say five centimeters and here it is it's huge so i'm going to show you how to do that today let's get started we we have to go and create our measurement system it doesn't come standard in centimeters millimeters feet inches so what you have to do is you have to tell blender what uh, measurement system that you're going to be using of course i'm using this to make jewelry and jewelry is always measured in millimeters you know pretty much everywhere in the world is using millimeters but the united states so you know we just have to adjust ourselves here so let's let's start working with our environment here uh, on in blender 2.8 on the right hand side of your screen over here you'll see that we have all our different options that we can do to our environment here on the top these we have our uh, this version here is for our scene rendering the next for dimensions for our render out and then we could just pick one here where is it right here the fourth one down with a little triangle here the scene uh, the scene tab uh, that's not the scene tab what is that tab that is the context tab so under the context tab, you have units. And here you can see we have, uh, well, at least I do right now, I have this measured out into metric. So if we pick our system of measurement, we have none, which would be the standard, let's say, blender units. Then we have metric and imperial. So I select metric. Now, because I'm working in millimeters, in this box here, I type in 0 0.001, which means that I'm working in a metric system in millimeters, and then just to cover myself here, I've got centimeters for my uh, default, but you, you could change that to millimeters also. I just leave that under centimeters. When I type in a dimension, I type it in like uh, 3.5 mm, which is millimeter, and I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Once you've had that done, then I suggest you come up to view, and in view on focal length, I have mine set to 50 millimeter for clip start point one millimeter and then end at one meter. It's it's irrelevant there for the most part, but it helps with just the viewing area in your 3D view. Once you've made those changes, I would suggest that you come over to file and then come down to defaults and then save default or save your startup file with obviously nothing in your 3D window so that every time you open Blender, it starts with this system of measurement. So with that said, when I model something, for instance, if I, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, so for instance, now I've created, I've created my workspace here and I'm working in millimeters. So if I type in Shift A and we're gonna add a mesh and let's say I add, uh, we'll add a cube. So my cube is not visible on the screen. If I scroll out, it, it'll be visible somewhere. It's, it's really huge. To get the dimensions, if I click on item, we can see it's two meters by two meters by two meters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that to, we'll say six millimeter, six mm. I'm gonna hit the tab key, come down to Y, I'm gonna do six millimeters again. And then tab one more time, and I'll type in six millimeters the last time on the z-axis press enter and now what I have I'll zoom in is basically a six millimeter cube 
if I hit the 7 key on my keypad, I can zoom in from the top and we can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six millimeters across and six down. So that way I know I'm working in millimeters. It just helps me to work in my environment. You may work with different measurement systems and you can change Blender to address any of the measurement systems that you want. This is still important if you're working with items in a, in a slicer, for instance, like the Alagumars, the Epax, or the Anycubic, where you're limited as to millimeter size for your print bed. So you want to model your object to fit within that because those print beds are designed and scaled in millimeters. Um, we just, it's easier for us to work on millimeters. So I'm going to design something here. Oh, where'd it go? I lost my model. Come back over here, I'll rotate that back. So I've got this model, and I know this is a six millimeter cube. I'm just gonna make some changes to it. Uh, I'm gonna add another object, come down to mesh, and I'm gonna add in a cylinder. And I'm just gonna size this down with the S key, just to get it kind of where I want it. Right about there. I'm going to move this up. I'll size it along the Z axis. Right about there. And now you can see that I've got this object kind of where I want it and how I want it to look. Just a random object. But it's 4.41 millimeters. So I could either use the S key to size, press and release the S key, and you get a little arrow. We could size that. Let's say I want to make this 4 millimeters. I could just kind of move my mouse closer and closer and closer till I get to four millimeters like that. Or you could just type in four millimeters and I can change this to four millimeters and I can leave the, well, it's right now it's about one centimeter or 10 millimeters and I'll just make that 10 millimeters. And now I have this object here, 10 millimeters high, four millimeters in diameter. I'm just going to move it right there. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more and I'm going to add in one more object, Shift A, and I'm going to add in a UV sphere. And I'm not going to worry about the uh, number of cuts along the millimeter. You can see it comes across here in two, meter, two meters. I'm going to make this seven millimeters by seven millimeters by seven millimeters. Oops, I did that wrong. Seven millimeters seven millimeters and here's my uv sphere in seven millimeters i'm going to put that right at the top and now what i want to do is join all three objects so i'm going to hit the shift key hold the shift key down and select each of the objects press Control j to join and now you can see we have an object that's approximately 2.06 centimeters by seven millimeters at its widest point so now I want to export this object and 3D print it. I'm not going to worry about whether it's hollow or anything. We're just going to bring this in for, for instructional purposes. So I'm going to select this and export it as an STL. Come over to File, come down to Export, STL. I'm going to move this to my desktop. Um, I have got something called uh, Models here. So I'm going to put that in the Models folder. And I'm going to, over on the left side where it says Export to STL, we're going to select selected only, which means that it's only going to take the object that we have currently selected on our 3D window. And I have a scale of one, which means that whatever scale I've modeled it in, in this case millimeters, I'm going to scale, I'm going to output that scale one time. If I changed it to two, it would double the size and dimensions of our model. If I changed it to 0 0.5, it would shrink the model down 50%. We'll just leave it at one. And I'm going to come over here, uh, I'll give this a name, and we'll just call this Test Object. And then I will hit Export, and now we've exported it. I'm going to minimize Blender, and with a Sheet 2 box program running, and I've got no model in here, I'm going to go to File, or I'm going to hit the Menu option, come down to Open. We're going to find that STL. So I know it's in a models director directory in my desktop. So here it is. 
and we're looking for test object right there and I'll hit open again I'm using a Mac you can use you know that works the same on the PC just the file browser is a little bit different but there's our object so is it the same size well we hope it's the same size because we want it to be the same size but to double check I'm gonna come over here and where's dimensions right there seven by seven by 220 millimeter 20.6 millimeters and if we look at our blender object uh, here we've only go down, gone down to one hundredths of a centimeter so we got 2.06 centimeters but on our sheet 2 box we've got 2.62 that is the exact same dimension that we exported this object from blender and that would be how you would model your object in Blender and export it into your Sheet 2 box slicer. Now, for instance, let's say you made a mistake and your object was exported and it's it comes in at a factor of 10. These would be 10 times their value. So you'd have 70 millimeters here. And I'm just going to type in 70 so that we can see. And when I scroll out, it doesn't quite fit in our print bed. So we'll go back to seven millimeters and there's our object. Now you can do whatever you want with this. It's the right dimensions. And if I just kind of come over here, well, we'll grab this. Let's cancel that, remove all. Let's go back. Let's rotate this along X, oops, rotate. At about 45 degrees or so. Then I will add my supports. I'm going to use medium supports, add all. And then you can just go ahead and check and make sure that your supports are all correct for what you are going to print. That's pretty much it, guys. I hope this video helps. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and share it if I did a good job. If I made a mistake, please let me know in the comments below. If you want to see anything else, please leave a little subject uh, that you'd like me to cover in the comments below too because I'm always willing to help you guys. Take care. Thanks guys for taking the time to watch some of my videos. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see new stuff that I put out, usually on a weekly basis, hit the subscribe button and you can get notified by clicking on that little bell. I really appreciate any uh, sharing that you can do and the thumbs up that I get if you like these videos kind of helps with uh, my channel to grow. You'll see that in the descriptions and on my website I do put affiliate links to products that I show and use in these videos. Those affiliate links uh, give me a little small commission, doesn't cost you anything if you buy them. And when you buy within the first 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a tiny little commission that helps keep this channel going. Any little bit helps to keep this up and running. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up and share on social media. Take care, guys. Happy watchmaking and jewelry making.